And now we're going to take a look at an example for carbon tetrabromide. We're going to come up with the Lewis structure for that. Now, first of all, let's figure out how many valence electrons each of the atoms has. Uh, carbon, uh, that contains uh, four valence electrons, and bromide contains, uh, let's see, bromine contains seven valence electrons, and there's four of them. So four times seven is 28 valence electrons, plus four for carbon. That's a total of 32 valence electrons available to make these bonds. Okay, next we're looking at the atom with the lowest electronegativity, which is carbon, not by much, but it is. But also carbon has the fewest valence electrons, so we expect that to be the central structure. Now in addition to that, notice that bromine, it needs one more electron to form a full eight electrons in its valence set. That means that typically bromine would expect to make one bond. Since carbon can make up to four bonds, since it has four valence electrons, it makes sense that it probably looks like this. There's going to be four bonds with carbon with a bromine atom on each side of that bond, like so. And that's probably the correct structure. Now that means that each bromine atom has six more additional electrons not involved in the bonding. So we can go ahead and indicate them like such. And that's probably the Lewis structure. Now quick, let's see if the octet rule is followed. Well, each bromine atom has six free electrons and two uh, tied up in the bonding right here. So part of the time, each bromine atom can have eight electrons. So the octet rule is okay for bromine. Carbon, it has two, four, six, eight electrons that it can have part of the time because they're all being bonded between bromine and carbon. So that means that the octet rule is also followed for carbon part of the time. So we're good on the octet rule. And what about the free electrons? With 32 that we can make bonds with, let's see if the numbers add up. So each bromine has six electrons. That's uh, six plus six plus six plus six. And then we have eight more electrons involved in the bonding plus eight. That is 24 plus eight, which is 32 electrons. And it looks like, yes, that matches the 32 electrons that were available. So we're meeting all the rules. And that looks like that's the Lewis structure for carbon tetrabromide. So pretty easy when you follow the rules. Now in the next videos we're going to start taking a look at how to draw a Lewis structure for ions rather than for just regular molecules. So come back and see if you're, if you're interested in those, come back and take a look at the next several videos that we have for you on that topic.